Social Security recipients will be receiving the largest COLA in over 40 years, but in 2024, it is possible we may not see any increase at all. Senate lawmakers finally reached a deal on government funding, and Donald Trump gets destroyed by another candidate in a recent poll. We'll go over all the details on that. So, hello everyone, and welcome back to your daily government and financial news update. In today's video, we'll be going over all the news that I just mentioned, along with some other updates in the stock market and Bitcoin. Now, as always, I am definitely interested in hearing your thoughts on everything, and I wanted to quickly thank everyone for giving my videos likes and sharing them, as that certainly helps push these videos out to other people like you. Okay, so a fairly encouraging report on inflation was released yesterday showing just a 0.1% increase for the month of November, which would be an annualized pace of 1.2%. Year over year, inflation is now sitting at 7.1%, down 2% from its peak in June when it was at 9.1%. So some pretty good progress there. Now, I am curious, have you noticed any improvement where you're at as far as prices go, whether that be at the grocery store, the gas station or pretty much on anything else have you seen them sort of staying the same maybe going down or have you seen them continue to go up so let me know what your thoughts are on that in the comment section below now over the last year where we've seen the highest inflation has included things like eggs which have been up by nearly 50 percent fuel oil has been up by 65.7 percent and electricity is up by 13.7 percent and on that list you can see the other increases as well now, when asked when we can expect prices to get back to normal, President Biden said he can only hope by the end of next year. Do you say when you expect prices to get back to normal, Mr. President? I hope by the end of next year, much closer. But I can't make that prediction. I just, I'm convinced they're not going to go up. I'm convinced they're going to continue from there. Do you plan to veto the NDAA over the vaccine? So what do we think about that? Do you personally have faith that we will be getting prices back down to normal by next year? Or do you think that perhaps they might just continue to go up or maybe just never go back to normal? Now, one other lie that's been spread by the Biden administration of late over the past several months at least, is that even though inflation is there, it's continuing to go up, at the very least, wages are still going up by more than inflation. Last several months, wages have gone up more than prices have gone up. Wages have gone up more than prices have gone up. But if we take a look at a chart that shows real average hourly earnings when factoring in inflation, we can see that for 20 consecutive months, workers have actually seen net wage decreases. This means that for November, for example, even if someone received a 5.2% raise at work from last year, they would have actually lost money because inflation has been at 7.1%. And if you think workers have had it tough, recipients of Social Security have gone without a raise since the beginning of this year, fighting off record high inflation and not receiving any type of extra help. So in October, it was announced that Social Security beneficiaries would be receiving a raise of 8.7% for 2023. Those payments will start going out in January, and for SSI recipients, you will actually get your raise on December 30th, which should help at least a little bit, but what does that mean going forward? What can we expect as far as the COLA raise in 2024? Well, historically speaking, the last time inflation was this high was back in 1981. The COLA at that point was at 11.2%. In the following year, the COLA came in at 7.4% and then 3.5% the year after that. If that trend were to continue, say, this year, one could argue that the COLA might end up being around 4.9% for next year if they're able to lower inflation by 3.8%. Since June, though, they've actually managed to reduce inflation by 2% already, and with more rate hikes to come from the Fed, it's possible that inflation may end up getting squashed at an even faster pace. Also, if we end up in a recession like we did back in December 2007 through June of 2009, it's possible that we may see price declines and therefore not end up with any COLA at all. Take, for example, back in 2009 and 2010, when this recession was taking place, not a single COLA was given out because of no inflation actually taking place. So a lot of people were upset. They were like, maybe the COLAs are going away. Why aren't we receiving any type of increase? Well, it was because no inflation was actually taking place. So the way they figured the COLA is by taking the CPIW numbers from July, August, and September, also known as the third quarter, and then comparing those same numbers to the same months in the prior year. So they're just looking to see, hey, are the prices going up from July, August, September? this year from the previous year 
and that's how they're figuring what the cola is going to be. So it is possible by then that we will begin seeing no price increases at all, or perhaps, again, if we end up in a recession, we could actually begin to see some price decreases, which means recipients of Social Security won't receive any type of raise at all. Now, this won't necessarily be a bad thing, as it would actually be better for beneficiaries to not have to play this game of catch up, you know, where you're receiving a 5% raise for one year, but then inflation keeps going up where it's 10%. And just like that, your 5% raise, you're, you're now behind where you have to wait for the COLA for the next year. So it's actually better if inflation does not go up at this pace and you're not receiving these COLAs, because if you're constantly playing this game of catch up, you're always you know losing value in your monthly checks. Now, what I personally see happening is somewhere perhaps in the middle. So I don't think it'll be as high as 4.9%. But I'm also not certain that it will come in unchanged either. More than likely, I could see it coming in at slightly over 2%, maybe 25 to 3%. And this is also what the latest survey of professional forecasters project for the year ahead as well, that we'll see a slowdown of inflation to 2.9% in 2023. Now, how much improvement we see on inflation will have a lot to do with how much the Fed decides to continue hiking rates. So today at 2 p.m. Eastern time, the Fed will be announcing the rate hike and given the improved inflationary numbers for November, it is expected they'll only raise rates by 50 basis points as opposed to 75 basis points as they did the four times before. Now, according to Larry Summers, it's going to be especially important for what the Fed is going to say, as far as the future goes at least, if they're going to signal that they're getting to the end of raising rates, but also making sure to not let up too early before completely killing off inflation. Watch. Larry Summers of Harvard, what are you looking at this week? I suspect it has to do with the Fed and maybe a little CPI. David, we're going to see a CPI number this week. Uh, most people think it's going to be another relatively soft number. If so, that'll be encouraging. I think everybody expects the Fed to move 50 basis points. But the question's going to be, what are they going to say about uh, the future? And is it going to tilt dovish or hawkish? And I'm not sure what the answer to that is. I'll be looking to see whether the statement in the press conference this time are going to be going in the same direction. They've had some question about that at a number of recent uh, past, uh, past meetings. I think the Fed does need to signal that it's getting to the end of raising rates, but it also signals that it understands that the main mistake central banks have made in the past has been uh, relenting on tight money before they have inflation uh, fully under control and down for the count. And I'll be looking for a clear awareness of that uh, issue from uh, the chair and from uh, the FOMC statement. Now, other than the Fed meeting taking place today, lawmakers in Washington will continue their scramble to get a government funding bill taken care of to avoid a government shutdown that could possibly happen at the end of this week. But first, I did want to make mention of an app that I recently started using called Ibotta. It is completely free to use and you don't have to give any type of sensitive information to sign up. And it also helps offset the cost of groceries. So on the app or their website, you can see the various products that you can earn cash back on. So for example, if you usually buy Tostitos chips, all you have to do is upload your receipt to the app or website showing the purchase of them on there. And bam, just like that, they'll give you $1 for the purchase. So it's basically $1 off of the Tostitos chips. Also, when you make your first purchase at the store for at least $50, again, this can be your normal grocery trip. It doesn't have to be anything special. Ibotta will actually give you $15 just for uploading your receipt. So really, you can think of that as just $15 back into your pocket or $15 off of your grocery bill just for uploading your receipt. And again, you can purchase what you normally do at the store. You don't have to purchase anything special. So if you are interested, I will leave a link where you can sign up in a pinned comment below. I'll also be receiving a small kickback as well if you do, which does help support my channel as well. And again, this is an app that I actually started using myself as evidenced by the $10.15 balance that I have in my account. Okay, so back to the government funding bill. Yesterday, leaders in the House and Senate were able to reach a bipartisan deal worth around $1.7 trillion, which they hope can be passed before Christmas. Now, today, the House hopes to vote on a week-long CR bill that extends the deadline until December 23rd, which will then give them more time to get the year-long funding package completed. 
Meanwhile, House Republican leaders are pushing for a stopgap funding bill to last until January because in January, like we all know, they will once again be holding the majority in the House, which will give them just a little bit more leverage on what ends up in the bill. So tonight, when the House votes on the one-week funding bill, we can expect for every single Republican to vote against it. However, considering that Democrats do hold the majority in the House, it should pass without any issues. Now, in some other news, a recent poll was released by USA Today showing Donald Trump getting absolutely trampled by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Now, only 1,000 registered Republicans were polled, but out of them, 56% said they would be voting for Ron DeSantis, whereas just 33% would vote for Donald Trump. Furthermore, more than 60% of those polled said they wanted a nominee who will continue Trump's policies, but just not be Trump and just 31% of those polled want him to run. So basically what we can get out of this is that people really, really love Donald Trump's policies. They loved uh, pretty much everything that he did. However, they just did not like the things that he said. Maybe they didn't like him in general. So they liked his policies, but they didn't like him as a person. So they would like perhaps someone like Ron DeSantis to come in, have the same policies as Donald Trump, but just not be Donald Trump, if that makes sense. Also, they might consider him to be someone who has a better chance of winning against a Democrat candidate, whether that be Joe Biden, whether that be Kamala Harris, whether that be Gavin Newsom, or you know whoever the Democrat party decides to pull out of the hat, they consider Ron DeSantis to have a better chance of winning. And I also think that you know it could possibly be the case if Ron DeSantis comes off as someone who has a higher favorability rating. Now, quickly moving into some money news. Yesterday, after the inflation report came in showing better than expected numbers, stocks absolutely soared to start the day, but then they did fall off just a tad bit at the end. Still, the S&P 500 ended up rising by 0.73%. The Dow Jones was up by 0.30%, and the Nasdaq saw the biggest increase of all in the green by just over 1%. Bitcoin investors also saw the inflation news as a good thing, as right when the news was released, it soared all the way up to $18,000, but later fell back down a couple hundred dollars. Still, over the last 24 hours, it has been up by 2.29%. Now, with that said, if you would like to receive up to 12 free stocks and $5 for the Bitcoin, in the comment section below, I will leave a link where you can receive just that from my partner in Webull. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. If you enjoyed the content in today's video and you would like to see more like it, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and also ring the notification bell. That way, you will be the very first to be notified when I do release future videos. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day ahead, and I'll see you in the next video.